Hey now, Pity Grizz here with part six, wrapping up some odds and ends from my Swiss Army Knife collection as of about June 2022. How about that uh, amazing intro? How about that editing? Isn't that something? Wow, I'm really impressed with myself. So what do we got here? To start it off, this is an Imperial uh, Swiss Army knife style, camp knife, whatever you want to call it, uh, with the red uh, colors and the, uh, the white shield in that location. They were definitely uh, going for the, uh, to be reminiscent at least of a genuine Swiss Army knife or, or the original Swiss Army knife even, pardon me. But we got here, pretty cheap knife to be honest with you. I mean, it'll get the job done but uh it's not one you're gonna have any much joy in using so it's got the usual accoutrements got a sturdy cap lifter flathead screwdriver don't miss the bail the uh through bail uh that's kind of interesting uh kind of is interesting where it is in the pivot it's kind of a weird spot in the uh where they put the hole through the pivot very high up and far in uh, compared to what I'm used to seeing. Um, we've got, and that's one of the joys of some of these cheaper clones, is they are a bitch to open. So we've got a safety style can opener. Got, oh, yeah, oh yeah, I forgot about this guy. The reamer doesn't open unless the blade's open. Isn't that a great feature? Imperial Ireland, Ireland's finest workmanship, I'm sure. Ooh hell is that cat hair or something yeah she's a little rusty but i just had to check one of these out so i won't need to check it out ever again got that reamer i mean it'll do the job but not much to look at that's for sure feels pretty sturdy though i'm sure the handles would break it like any other plastic knife but uh the rest of it feels like it would do the job that's not saying much, but that's all I'm going to say on that. Next up, we've got a Syracuse Knife Company. Uh, this was a sub-brand of Camillus, and they made these in 1975 and 1976 in Poland. I believe they're made by a company called Gerlach Knives. This is a sturdy little knife. Not a bad knife. Uh, it's a little rough around the edges. Uh, there's some definitely details and finishing, like this point on top of the can opener bothers me. But, uh, I mean, if you were in the Eastern Bloc uh, in the 70s during the Cold War, you'd be quite happy to have this, even though these were getting imported to America, but uh, similar knives were available in, in Poland. So, what we've got is the European All. Bam. Not bad. Nice and solid. Everything on here is nice and tight. Good pull. Got the familiar square Phillips with the file. This is an 8 centimeter model. So uh, this would be the equivalent of the Victorinox Salesman. Except patterned on one of the earlier versions with the uh, exposed rivets. Got that uh, eagle going on there. I don't know what, really what that's about, but they got an eagle there. These were sold in America. Got the cap lifter. And it's like they attempted to sharpen the edge, but then polished it, like uh, tumbled it and softened it up. Because there's definitely an angle to this, like they sharpened it, ground it, and then it's like they tumbled it and took the sharp edge off it. I, I don't know what's going on there. Seems like some signals got crossed. Got this little dinky can opener. I'm sure it works, but uh, it's a kind of a goofy looking one, isn't it? Then we've got them scissors. Not the prettiest scissors, but they do cut well. They're sturdy. And they're just butt ugly, in my opinion. Nothing to look at, but this is a utility knife. It'll get her done. This was meant to fool somebody by in like a Father's Day gift or something. Just going out to get a Swiss Army knife. And sure looks the part, you know, from a distance through a clamshell package for sure. Maybe behind a glass in a display case. Got a little pen blade there. There you notice the uh, pattern number 357, product of Poland. And we've got the main event, the main blade, Syracuse Knife Company. 
you know, good little blade, kind of on a angle there. That actually helps with cutting, but uh, I like how they look when the spine is nice and straight, but you know, uh, it probably is more effective for cutting that way. Next, uh, what we got here is, I'm gonna have to wait till I open it, I forgot. This is a Swedish knife, I know that. I believe this is EKA, uh, Skultuna, Sweden. Uh, cracked Ice, or AKA Mother of Toilet Seat, as uh, it's called in the guitar community. This is actually a, a nice example of Cracked Ice. Some Cracked Ice looks horrible, absolutely horrible. It always gets this yellow tint from uh, UV exposure. Uh, celluloid plastic absorbs UV light and changes colors, and that's why you see a lot of, uh, of plastic knives, vintage knives that are worn out like this. But she's got a kind of wiry, kind of delicate uh, corkscrew. Notice the brass liners. It's a very well-made knife, just uh, lacking in that corkscrew. I don't think it's great. Got that awl, nice sharp awl. I snap to that all. Let me see. Is this one? Oh, yeah. I remember this guy now. This is the one where the nail nick for the can opener, cap lifter, whatever you want to call it. Damn it. Notice the nail nick. They got too close to the top and broke through. So the nail nick's uh, damn near useless on this knife. Ain't that? That's something you pay extra for. That's that Swedish, cra Swedish craftsmanship. I guess that's why uh, maybe Sweden aren't particularly known for the Swiss Army knives. I mean, I know they're known for those, uh, I don't know, there's Mora, Mora knives, I believe that's them, unless that's Norway, I don't know, that's all Scandinavian, it's all uh, Bjorgen, Fjorgen, Schmjorgen up there, if you ask me, I'm kidding, of course, notice this is a uh, cool can opener, you uh, rock this little uh, cut out on the edge, and then cut up with the blade, and these edges are also sharpened to work as cable strippers, so... That's kind of cool. I like that can opener design. That was the main thing that drew me to this knife. Then we've got the ever popular pen blade. Bickety bow, how do you like me now? And then of course, we've got a main blade. Again, notice the uh, pitch on this one. It's angled down. While I don't like the look of that, I like a nice straight line. I do think that helps with, you know, getting your hand a little bit out of the way for uh, cutting against a board or something like that. And there's the Tang Stamp EKA Escultuna. I believe it's Escultuna Knife, uh, you know, something. <laughs> I don't know. You can tell I did a lot of research on this knife, but very cool knife. Notice the snap on that thing. That thing snaps like a bear trap. My Lord. Next up. We got this guy. This is a Spanish clone of a 50s fisherman. Now you will see, notice there's this little uh, uh, shield and crown inlay for uh, Regina, the queen. Uh, but uh, you see them on a lot of knives, some that are made in China. Uh, you see them in an ITOR brand, A-I-T-O-R, whatever they call it, ATOR, ITOR brand knives. Uh, PL, uh, PIC branded knives, a bunch of them, but it's got the awl, the spring on the awl is a little weak, but it'll still do the job. Got some filthy aluminum scales in there, how about that guys? Love it. Check it out. It's got the square Phillips with the file. Bam. Next up, got that cap lifter. They did not bother to include the cutting edge. And this stripping notch is useless. It's just a notch. There's no angle to the edge. It's actually a little too large. Uh, you might strip a, like a number 10 cable with it or something like that. But even then, you'd have to cut it first. There's no point in using a notch once you're cutting the sheath. Um, then we've got a Victorinox style can opener. Yeah, notice, look at the high quality manufacturing. Look at that spring sticking up above the liners with the knife open. You don't get that. You just don't see that quality anymore. You know, that kind of works workmanship, pride in one's work. Next up is the scissors. Uh, can you tell this one's a clone? 
Some people get bothered by calling them clones. I mean, it's a clone. It's This was meant to deceive the public. This was meant to jump on the bandwagon, and hopefully somebody would see this and see, oh, that one's a dollar fifty cheaper than the real one, and I can't tell the difference because I'm an idiot, so I'm going to buy this one. Or not necessarily an idiot. I apologize. That was mean. Not an idiot. But, uh, you know, just the general public, you know, somebody would buy this as a gift for their son or, or dad or husband or brother and, uh, or, or wife or sister or daughter. You know, let's, let's be real here. Women use knives too. But, um, the, uh, you know, this would fool somebody who's a casual, you know, who's not into knives. They wouldn't know the freaking difference. Which is why uh, Victorinox often had to defend their trademarks. This is one of the ones that actually uses the... Uh, the can opener bam we've got that big blade same profile as victorinox no surprise rj richter stainless spain never heard of them i'm sure somebody can tell me about them uh i'm not really that interested i just thought it was a cool clone of a fisherman and a cool thing about this it did go full bore and gave the clip blade root so you got the exposed rivets you got the ugly cheap like semi pot metal type brass bale you know when you see brass this color that ain't it, it ain't good brass should turn like green not brown it's just a just a cheap knockoff but actually not bad for what it is next up we got another syracuse and uh tobias apologies in advance but you're probably not going to enjoy opening the tools on this guy especially that long nail file i cannot get some of these out with my fingers i have to use assistance to get them out this is uh basically a clone of a early champion champion a like uh, the 1952 to late 60s champion with the corkscrew so you got a corkscrew got it all you do have they even went as far as to yeah see if i can get this bad boy out there we go that would be really great. Say you needed to file your fingernails, you, would, you wouldn't have a fingernail because it would rip off while you're trying to pull this nail file out. So you wouldn't have to worry about filing it because it wouldn't be there. Um, yeah, but it, it's cool. It's cool having it. It would be nice if you could actually get to it without busting your fingernail off because there is just no way. By the time the angle you get in there, it's too deep to the nail neck. It's uh, pretty much useless. It's got the same can opener and... Uh, uh, cap lifter as the other screwdriver I showed, as the other Syracuse I showed a minute ago. Got a rough looking metal file. I'm sure it'll work in a pinch. They did bother to put the metal saw on it at least. You know, it's a clone. It's not the, uh, this was not an era where uh, they were particularly concerned with quality. It was about quantity. Ah, the saw comes factory loose. You know, that's that kind of workmanship I was talking about. That's the good stuff right there. Uh, the scissors. Yeah, I'm not even going to bother to get them out. Uh, those are actually here. Let me go ahead. Let me go ahead. Oh, my Lord. Yeah, forget it. Scissors ain't coming out. That was more for illustration of how much of a pain in the ass. And notice that the nail nick for the main blade is behind the scissors. So this knife's a treat all around. I mean, that's really, if you want to work out, you know, build up nice, thick uh, nail neck nails, fantastic knife for that. Now I'm going to throw in a curveball. Here is a old cross electrician. Uh, I just, uh, I don't have enough. I didn't have any category to throw this in, so I threw it in here. I could have done it with the 91 millimeters, and I may have. So if this is a repeat, I apologize course oh look at that i could actually get the tools out that's amazing cap lifter screwdriver notch bong bong of course it's got a blade it's got a reamer you know this video is getting long in the tooth already cool thing about this knife is that electrician's blade with the curved spot for cable ripping very cool next up we've got old stumpy here uh, thanks to uh, uh, 
Dave Arnold, who recently uh, sent me a copy of his book, A Collector's Guide on Finger Knives, I now know a little bit more about this knife, because this was a mystery knife when I first got it. Asked around on All About Pocket Knives, and they couldn't help me out. But this is a stump knife uh, manufactured by a German company called Senta. Uh, you think it's meant to look like something? Yeah, it's meant to look like an early Wenger. Uh, this is actually a nice little knife. Uh, the awl is a little hard to get out. I think the uh, it's kind of silly having a corkscrew on a tiny knife like this. It's loose. If I had a rough life opening up some wine, this knife was used for sure. Uh, I mean, I guess I get the job done. That's a tiny corkscrew. I'd worry about that guy breaking. Then we've got a little, oh, it's a little tiny baby clip blade. Got a little tiny can opener. This one is just at eight centimeters, 80 millimeters. Very short, compact little knife. Oh, can I get it out? Yeah, now my fingernail from, say, busted my damn fingernail. Now I'm going to struggle to get everything out. Thank God I have plenty of nail files around. Got that little tiny cap lifter. Very sturdy, though. Nice and tight. And then we've got... What used to be the main blade, that's been cut down to a little sheep's foot, guess the tip broke off. And there we can see the one and only stamp on this knife, Stumpy, Stump. But I did find from the book, found exact knives, built the exact same way with this unique uh, brass uh, surround around the acrylic uh, transparent shield. So, very cool, I was happy to find out what that knife was all about. Next up, we got another oddball. This is a Dutch Army knife, 1970, KL70. Uh, Kleinen Landmark. I can't remember how to pronounce it now. So, no back tools. Got this. It's talking about stumpy. Look at that stumpy little all. That's a stubby little guy right there. Then on the front, or is this the back? I don't know. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. I'm not even going to mess with it. I'm literally going to rip that fingernail right off. We've got the famous, ubiquitous cap lifter with screwdriver. Coming up next is an old school can opener. Basically just a st other stumpy knife. Just a stumpy stout knife. And, uh, yep, that's your can opener right there. And, yeah, I guess you could rock this around the edge of the can. I, I don't know. It's not, not not great. Finally, if I can get it out, if I can get it up, oh, I can get it up. Got the main blade of Mifa, Dutch maker. They also made A-Lock Soldier's Knives before uh, Victor, and while well, uh, they took over, they made the same pattern. Alox knives as Victorinox had made for the Dutch Army previously. Last and certainly not least, I saved the best for the last as always. This is one of my absolute favorite knives. This is a Carl Schmidt Sohn. I believe it dates to 50s, 60s. I don't know. It's hard to tell because they made knives like this into the 80s and not 80s, 70s and 80s even. So notice the five turn corkscrew. I mean, guys will say, oh, that's not a clone. It's a clone. The dimensions are spot on. The tools are identical. I mean, this part, I could take these parts off and put them on a Swiss Army knife. That's how identical it is. Got that five-turn corkscrew. Bam! The all. Bickety bow. Notice, this is what I love about this knife. The uh, contrasting color in the buffalo horn scales. I think that is gorgeous. I love that creamy color mixed with the dark almost chocolatey notes on the front and then that dark brown you know bordering on black on the back then we've got the cap lifter gotta have a cap lifter it just ain't right of course we've got the early warner style can opener bam next up <laughs> that fingernail's all busted up man look at that guy Oh man, little clip blade. This is a delicate little clip blade, but man, 
That would be a great, this thing, you could try, this thing would be a damn scalpel. Look how paper thin that thing gets at the end. Definitely a delicate, but that would be great for some precise cuts, some skinning, stuff like that. Uh, filleting tiny fish, if you wanted to fillet your minnows, maybe some sardines or something. It's even got the uh, tank stamp, Carl Schmidt Sohn. Uh, I guess that's son of Carl Schmidt, Carl Schmidt and Sohn, Sons, Solingen. They're famous for their little uh, church house uh label they uh i believe 1921 they trademarked that little house so they're a kind of renowned german maker they go back to at least 1829 i believe the family had was in cutlery earlier than that but this company was uh incorporated in 1829 then we've got the main blade this main blade was really rough when i got it, it had some chips out of it the tip was bent and I think I did a pretty, this was one of the first knives I did as a project. And uh, I've worked on it a couple times as my skills improved. And I think I've got it pretty good. I had to tighten up. This thing was really loose. I had to tighten up. I squeezed it down, then reset the rivet and then ground it down uh, fine uh, level again. Notice the beautiful bird's eye rivets, two-tone nickel silver pins with brass washers. Love that look. This is a stunning knife. Anyway, I just spent 21 minutes talking about knives that aren't even Swiss Army knives. Well, except for the ones that were Swiss Army knives, but, and the Dutch Army knives. Don't forget the Dutch. Never forget the Dutch. Anyway, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Like, subscribe, comment, or don't. It's your life. I'll see you in the next one. Peter Grizz out.